I used to listen to lectures and make notes and after coming back to hostel I would read that topic in the textbook and I would highlight the important points thinking that highlighting it is somehow magically imprinting all that information onto my brain and when it is time for the exam and when I open the book I won't be remembering anything not the things that I highlighted not the things that I wrote in the notebook while listening to the lecture then what I do is I learn that again and appear for the exam and then after some time another exam comes which is including this topic and that time when I open the book I would be remembering something but I won't remember everything and I will learn that again this was happening to me from the very first day of medical school I'm learning stuff I'm forgetting then I'm relearning that and I'm forgetting again so it's like a vicious cycle learning forgetting learning forgetting learning forgetting so what I thought is I had a bad memory or something like that so when I asked my friends about it they were also facing the same problem so that kept me thinking it's not my problem if everybody is having the same problem then there is something wrong with the way we study so like I told in the first video when I researched about this how to study properly I came across this technique called active recall and spaced repetition and this one strategy completely revolutionized the way I learn in medical school among the three strategies I'm talking this one strategy is the most effective and the best even if you are not following the first two strategies that I have told you if you are following just this strategy that is gonna completely change the way you learn this will be the fourth video in the CID study revolution series if you have not watched the previous videos you can click here I am putting the link to a playlist here and the links in the description also so in this video I'll be talking about the active recall and space repetition let's get started For those of you who don't know me, I am Alamin Ashraf, a final year medical student at Ames Bloor Asia. I make videos about learning and productivity, tech for students, health and fitness, and my journey of becoming a doctor. If you would like to see them, then subscribe to my channel and ring that notification bell. I would like to start this video with this quote by Benjamin Franklin. Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I may remember. Involve me and I learn. There are basically two types of learning, passive and active. The common method that we use is passive learning. So what is this passive learning? Passive learning is the form of learning in which you are assimilating the information passively. So then what are the passive learning methods? Passive learning includes all the methods that most of us are currently using. Listening to lectures, making notes, then listening to online lectures and making notes, then reading the textbook and highlighting. All these are passive methods of learning. Then what is active learning active learning is something in which you are actively involved in which you are actively assimilating the information so what are the methods of active learning then active learning includes taking tests summarizing teaching someone else flashcards and things like that so how can you incorporate this active learning in your daily life number one instead of making notes while listening to lectures after the lecture finishes try to summarize it in your own words that is a form of active learning, summarizing the stuff that you learn. So the second way in which you can do active learning is when you are reading the textbook, instead of highlighting it, just after you finish reading the textbook, close that textbook, keep it aside, take a paper and summarize everything that you have learned. And if you are making some mistakes in the facts that you have learned, you can go back, check the textbook and make the changes after you finish summarizing. And you can do this also when you are reading the textbook. Instead of highlighting, you can write a question beside a paragraph. And when you are rereading the textbook, what you can do is you can just put your hand beside that question, read the question and try to answer that question. Then the third way in which you can do active learning is Feynman technique. That's basically teaching someone else. I will talk about Feynman technique in a future video. Then the Fourth way in which you can do this is by solving questions, solving MCQs or solving previous year papers and things like that. And the next way of active learning. And this is my favorite method of active learning. That is making flashcards. I make use of the app Angi for making flashcards and doing space repetition. I would talk about how I use Angi and how to make good flashcards in a future video. So now you know how to do active learning. 
do you think doing active learning is gonna get you good marks in MBBS? If you thought so, then you are so wrong. Just doing active learning won't get you anywhere, particularly in MBBS. This active learning would suffice for a concept heavy subject like physics. If you are a physics student, then doing this active learning is more than enough to get you good marks in exams. But for a fact heavy course like MBBS, active learning is not enough to get you good grades. Here comes the use of spaced repetition, most scientifically backed study technique. Spaced repetition is based on the concept of the forgetting curve. So what is this forgetting curve? The forgetting curve states that you forget 30 to 40 percent of the stuff that you learn within one day and by around 30 days you will forget 80 percent of the stuff. That means you will only retain 20 percent of stuff at the end of 30 days. So in space repetition, what we do is whenever we are forgetting 30 to 40 percent of the stuff, we try to actively recall and relearn that. So in doing so, what happens is that the slope of the forgetting curve halves. So if you are forgetting 30 percent of the stuff in one day, now you will be forgetting it in two days. And then when you repeat that again after two days, you will be forgetting 30 percent of that stuff in four days only. So like that, this will go on, like the interval will double and go on. And when you keep on doing this, a point will come when you will forget 30% of stuff only after six months. So this works just like building muscle in the gym. So you are letting the information, you are letting the memory to disintegrate a bit. So whenever you are starting to forget the stuff, whenever this memory is starting to disintegrate, you try to actively recall the stuff and you make the memory stronger. Just like you are allowing your muscles to disintegrate a bit in the gym, forcing them to grow back stronger. There are thousands of papers written on space repetition and hundreds of experiments conducted on space repetition. That's why I told you this is the most scientifically backed learning technique. I will put links in the description of some of the studies, some of the papers that I liked. And I would like to bring your attention to this particular study. There were a group of 120 subjects. They were divided into three groups. And everyone was given 60 photos associated with a story. And these three groups were given three different study strategies. The first group was given the photos and a cassette recording which told the story. So what they did is they had to look at the picture and hear the cassette recording. And the second group was also given the same cassette recording and the photos and they were asked to give a test the next day. And the third group was also given the same cassette recording and the photos and they were asked to give three tests which was spread across a week. The first group only remembered 16 photographs. The second group remembered 24 and the third group remembered 32. So the first group was just doing passive learning. The second group was doing active learning and the third group was doing active recall with space repetition. So active recall with space repetition is almost twice as good as passive learning. And many researchers are suggesting that the patients who are suffering from Alzheimer's and dementia can also improve the quality of their life by doing this space repetition. So how to do this space repetition? Like I told before, I use the space repetition and flashcard app Anki to help me do space repetition. There are a lot of other apps like Qslet and you can also do space repetition in Notion also. And if you are hell bent on not using any software or apps, then what you can do is the one two rule. So what we do in the one two rule is you read something today, you try to recall it after one day, then after two days, then after one week, then after two weeks, then after one month, then after two months. So I won't be able to do that, keeping track of the time, like when I repeated this last, all that, that is gonna be so hard for me. That's why I use Anki. So if you are able to pull this off, or if you are trying to do the one-two method, then please put that in the comment box. If you like what you see, leave a thumbs up and share this video with everyone who needs to see this. Subscribe to my channel and ring that notification bell so that you will know when I will be uploading the next video. Bye till we meet again.